Right, hello everyone, and welcome to Coding with Lying episode 2. This video is a little bit delayed today because I've been racking my brain on how best to convey this to my less than expert audience. Um, so, firstly, I'm going to show off exactly how the two major AI systems work today. Obviously, there's a fair, there's a fair few if you go into the real nitty-gritty detail. Uh, but the two main at the moment are task and neural network. So, a task system works pretty much like this. You've got start, action, and stop. Start is a bunch of preconditions, uh, say, is my health below six, or something like that, or do I not have a food item in my inventory? And if that evaluates to true, then you go to some very pre-programmed actions which cause the entity to start doing something, say, finding the nearest deposit depository of food and going to get something, or going to the nearest cleric and asking for help. And then you have a bunch of preconditions again for stop, which says, is my health above six, or do I have food in inventory? In which case, if that evaluates to true, the action stops and the task becomes inactive until start is true again. Fairly straightforward, used a lot in current game systems. Neural nets, used a lot less, and you'll see exactly why very soon. So, you have a network, sort of like this, not, they're not usually as uniform as this, but you have input neurons, which could deliver your variables, they're usually numbers, uh, because it's hard to evaluate letters and stuff. And then you have different neurons connected to different neurons in the preceding layer. Some of them will go cross layers, depending on the complexity of the actual network, but certain ones that we'll be using will only be going uh, to the last network. And those multiply the values coming out of these neurons by different values, the weight values, and then run an activation function over it. I do actually have a little diagram down here which tells you exactly how it works. Uh, I will be explaining this in greater detail at a, at a later stage, it's not our major thing today, but that's roughly it. It's a D function over A times A plus B times B plus uh, C times C and all sorts to run out of inputs. And eventually, that makes its way to an output, which then determines what happens. Not used because it's extremely process heavy. Uh, and it's also tremendously imprecise in a lot of situations. You kind of have to teach it very, very tough stuff before it will actually start to work properly. But it's a lot more variable than the task system, which has these preconditions set at run, t set at compile time, and then they never change, more or less. Although you can add a little bit of var variability into them if you're smart. And with that, then, we've got a system which is capable of, of successfully doing complex uh, behavioral algorithms, but is very invariable in them, so consequently you see your, uh, you, you see things like in Minecraft where, where mobs are very easy to manipulate and control, and then you've got the other one which is variable to its own detriment, and more or less incapable of complex behaviors. So to combat that, we've got my hybrid system, which has the pre-programmed behaviors of the task system, and very small neural networks, which function to uh, which function as the preconditions of the system. So, if this network evaluates to true for whatever reason, the action begins, and this one evaluates to true, it stops. So the question then is that we have a problem. That gives us th that system gives us the benefit of the neural network's variability and the task system's pre-programmed complex behavior, but neural networks, as I've mentioned, are extremely process-heavy, so we can't have the neural networks live all of the time. So we have to figure out a way that we can have the neural networks basically be dead for 99% of the time. Whenever they're not needed, they need to be dead. They need to not be loaded and running. So question, how do we do that without pre-programming every single network? Well, look at the network again. You see, every time we go past here, the previous network becomes effectively irrelevant, obsolete. So we start out with this network, which is all of our values that, we're, that this network is drawing from. And then when we get to calculating this network, it's running off of this value set. So effectively, we can use one array to hold all the values coming out of the preceding 
level of neurons. So what's going to happen is we will have our initial array here, which is going to tell us all of the input values. That We'll, we'll stick all of our input values, uh, is there a food item in, in the inventory, what is my health, that kind of thing, into an, into an initial array, and then we will retrieve the values for the uh, first level of neural uh, neurons, so their weight values, which, uh, which values they're referring to, and the activation function. And we'll calculate all of those and we'll shove the results from those neurons into a second temporary array. Once we're done with that level, we will overwrite the existing input array with the temporary array and we'll blank the temporary. Temporary, so many R's in that sentence. Anyways, so we'll repeat that process going over and over. So output becomes input, output becomes input, and eventually our output will have very few values in it, ideally one, which we can then run just a bog standard. Um, is this greater than what? Is this greater than 0.5? If so, true, otherwise false, and that will determine our evaluation. That means I need a couple of nested loops, basically, because I need one to be carrying through every single neuron, and I need one to carry through per layer. So I've got one one loop going through per layer and one going through per neuron, sort of like a grid if you want to imagine that. Uh, that's what I'm presently working on. There hasn't been much change with regards to the uh, the visuals of the of the uh, mobs right now. So they're not too different, and they certainly aren't behaving any different because I haven't gotten uh, the custom tasks with all these neural network preconditions running just yet. Uh, I have been doing a little bit of work on their models, so that they look different at least, but uh, retexturing stuff in MCP is a bit tricky. Uh, but that is it for now, I hope this explanation has been enlightening at all. Um, I may do a bit more work on ex trying to explain this later, uh, but the next thing I'll probably try and explain is calculating neurons. Uh, so with that in mind, I shall catch you all next time.